Shalom, Erev Tov. That's so wonderful to see so many familiar faces. And uh, what a wonderful opportunity before Rosh Hashanah. As uh, we know, so uh, I want to thank in particular the OU for uh, allowing us, really, the entire Kihila here in Yerushalayim and beyond, an opportunity to prepare for Rosh Hashanah and especially this year. Because I think this year we're all waiting together for the shofar blast, and we're going to see very shofar, very special shofar blast, hearing very special shofar blast. The question is really, what are we awaiting? And uh, we're going to explore, as Chazal tell us, if shloshim yom lifnei hachag, shoalim v'dorshim b'nyanei hachag, it's not only with regard, as we know, to Pesach, which right after Purim we begin to prepare, for the halacha to Pesach, but really, ideally, 30 days before every Chag, we should be engaged in learning about the Chag. And when it comes to Rosh Hashanah, it's very clear that there's really only one mitzvah relating to the Chag, namely the mitzvah of Shofar. So uh, we have uh, what to explore within the mitzvah, but also certainly beyond that, as we're going to see ourselves. And uh, with this, I also want to thank Kielak Nitzanim for opening up uh, their doors for Torah Yerushalayim of Elul Hei Tavshin Pei Dalid. And uh, we're going to explore and prepare together, if not all the halachot of shofar, the uh, way that we uh, observe the mitzvah to Kiyat Shofar today, which as we know, just like all the mitzvot as they were done in the time of the Beis HaMikdash, which uh, were really indicative of the entire service, the entire avod of the Beis HaMikdash, from morning to night. After the Chorban, Chazal incorporated the uniqueness of the day as linked to the Tzvilat Musaf of the day. So for example, if the Seder Avod of Yom HaKippurim clearly began the early morn or even seven days earlier, Chazal said, we're going to put it in Musaf because Musaf, literally the additional offering that's offered on that's offered on these special days tells us what's unique about the day and therefore the mitzvah of shofar albeit really began in the morning today we're only going to sound it as we approach tefillat musaf and is going to be an intrinsic component of the tefillah of the amida of musaf and as such through exploring the musaf itself which as we know one should always be ragil one should be a little fluent and proficient in the words of the tefillah, this is going to serve, hopefully, as a wonderful preparation for what we should be thinking, feeling about not just the tefillot, but about the mitzvah of shofar this year. So we're going to turn to uh, the discussion with regard to how we now keep the mitzvah of shofar within the context of Ashmanasri of Musaf. And we're going to explore together with Chazal various machlokot disputes as to the best way to, uh, pro to uh, potentially formulate the Musaf and uh, the best way to fulfill, as we know by now, not just the nine, but the 30 kolot of the Amida. So we find that the Gemara Masacha Brochot speaks about not only uh, the uh, actual placement of the Brachot, but the number of the Brachot. And as we know, beginning with the Shmonasri Brachot, the 18 Brachot that we recite on a daily basis, Chazal tell us it's not by chance that we somehow magically arrived at the number 18, which is somewhat ironic, continuing that we actually have 19 Brachot. But Chazal say, what is it about the number 18? And all the in and our subconscious, we're all thinking of Chai, Chai, that's not what Chazal tell us, but rather 18 are the number of vertebrae that we have so that we recognize which each one of the brachot are vulnerabilities of standing before HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Or maybe it's because our 18 mizmorim before mizmor yutet yan chashem biyom tzara. Maybe it's an expression of turning to HaKadosh Baruch Hu out of fear and uh, out of suffering. Or maybe it's connected the 18 times that HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe in the construction of the Mishkan, Kasher Tiva Hashem Kain Asa, teaching us that Shmona Esrei is really a fulfillment and a complement to uh, the building of the Mishkan. So then Chazal continue and say, wait a second, how about the brachot of a Shmona Esrei of other days of the year? For example, on Shabbat, why did Anshe Knesset Agdola compose seven brachot and not 18 for Shabbat? Oh, it must be Kneged, the Sheva, Sheva Kolot, the seven times that we say the name of Hashem, and is more Chavtet, expressing the manifestation of Hashem's power over 
the world over creation, kol Hashem bahadzar, kol Hashem shober arazim, kol Hashem abayalot, and uh, that certainly is a beautiful expression of what we're commemorating on Shabbat. So too, as we continue on, on every Chag then, Shabbat will serve as the model, with three brachot of Shavach at the beginning, three brachot of Hodaya, and the one central one that we're going to revisit of Kedushat Hayom, which is why, as we know, it's uh, all uh, the more interesting that the only exception to this rule is the Musaf that we dive in on Rosh Hashanah, not with seven brachot, but with nine brachot. And not just with nine brachot, but as we all know, the longish Munesri. Longer in brachot, certainly, than that on Yom Kippur. So we take a look at the Mishnah that describes the Seder brachot that was already instituted before the uh, third generation of Tanaim, Omer Avot Gvurot Kedushat Hashem, the first three brachot that we call the brachot of Shvach, Vecholel Malchiyot Imahen. And the Tanakama, who we're going to see in just a minute, as Rav Yochanan ben Nuri, explains that what is the proper order of the brachot right after Kedushat Hashem, you're then going to say Malchiot, which we're going to see in just a mo moment, albeit is one bracha, but composed of Tem Sukim and Ve'ino Tokea. In other words, what do we all say as Kedushat Hashem on Rosh Hashanah? Beginning with Rosh Hashanah, instead of Akel HaKadosh, we all recite HaMelech HaKadosh. So according to the Tanakhama, don't just say HaMelech HaKadosh, but if you're already stating that Hashem is HaMelech HaKadosh, then say Melech HaKol HaAretz, and then also speak about God, being uh, the king over the entire world. And don't, don't blow the shofar then. Don't blow the shofar as part of Kedushat Hashem and Malchiot. Rather, then go on to Kedushat Hayom. Then talk about Mekadesh Yisrael v'yom hazikaron. Then Bitokea. Then blow the shofar. Then uh, you'll recite the Tempsukim of Zechronod and Tokea. And then the shofar road and Tokea. And continue and complete it with the three brachot of Avodah, Hodah, and Berchat Kohanim. The last three brachot of Hodah of Shmona Esrei. This is the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. So we're all very familiar of Machlokot, of the presentation in the Mishnah, of differing opinions. And usually the structure of the Mishnah would be the Tanakama, opinion number one, and then the Chachamim Omrim, or Divrei Rabbi Eliezer. Now we're going to hear the dissenting opinion, which generally is simply presented by the new uh, presentation of the personality who states the dissenting opinion. And yet we find a bombastic response and continuation of the Mishnah. Amar lo Rabbi Akiva. It doesn't just say Amar Rabbi Akiva with uh, the tuna Bahavta Lorecha Kamocha going on in the back of our minds, but something very disorienting. Amar lo Rabbi Akiva. As if Rabbi Akiva gets up in the middle of the base medrash in front of everyone, walks directly up to Rav Yochanan Benuri and says, I may know toke. I have to step away from uh, the base medrash. This is how Rabbi Akiva says it. I may know toke ale malchiot. If you're not going to blow when you say malchiot together with Kedushat Hashem, then lama hu maskir. Then why should you even say malchiot? In other words, not only does he agree, disagree, disagree, but he vehemently disagrees. I don't understand your opinion, Rav Yochanan Benuri. You're going to say malchiot, but you're not going to blow the shofar? Ella. So now, uh, this is the opinion that we thought we would continue with. But only after that very bombastic introduction do we hear, no, says Rabbi Akiva, rather say, avod gvurot kedushat Hashem, and a kolel malchiot im kedushat hayom. Say hamelech kadosh. And now, when you're about to say, mekat yishisro v'yom azikaron, you're also going to include melech kol haaretz, all the psukim of malchiot and vitokea, and blow the shofar then. Zechronot vitokea, shofarot vitokea, and then continue with avoda hoda and berchat kohanim. So uh, now that we understand two differing opinions, we uh, have to appreciate why is Rabbi Akiva so disturbed with the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri? And in fact, the Gemara asked this question: Amar lo Rabbi Akiva may not tokea la malchiot lamahu maskir, and is very bothered by the formulation and says, what does that mean? Rabbi Kiva is very 
upset with uh, Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri's phraseology that yes, you should say Malchiot with Kedusha Tashem and not blow the shofar, then Lama hu maskir, then why are you saying Malchiot? What does Rabbi Akiva mean? Why are you saying Malchiot? Lama hu maskir, we're going to be learning the sugya in just a moment, because uh, Rachmana Amar Itkar. Because Chazal extrapolated from the Pesukim in the Torah that you're supposed to say Malchiot. So I'm sorry, Rabbi Akiva, but why are you so upset with Rabbi Yochanan Benuri? So Rabbi Yochanan Benuri does things a little differently than you. You're upset that he's saying Malchiot. Why should you say Malchiot? He should say Malchiot because you have to say Malchiot on Rosh Hashanah. So what question are you really asking, Rabbi Akiva? Albeit, that seems to be how the Gemara initially understood Rabbi Akiva's statement. Lama maskir. Why are you saying Malchiot? if you're not going to blow the shofar. But the Gemara says, it can't be that that's what he's really saying, because he knows that even Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri knows that mita oraita, you have to mention the malchut of Hashem on Rosh Hashanah, Ella, it must be. Now what does Rabbi Akiva really mean? What is he upset with Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri's position with regard to Ella, lama eser lema, lema tesha, dahoel bishtane ishtane, Rather, he really meant to ask it as such. When he says, uh, Rabbi Yochanan ben Uri, if you're not going to blow the shofar, when you say malchiot, uh, then lama hu maskir, he doesn't mean, why are you saying malchiot? Everyone knows you have to say malchiot. He means, why are you saying the full malchiot of tem sukim? Whereas, what should you really say? You should just say naim sukim. I'm wondering... Really, Rabbi Akiva, that's what you're so upset about? That's how Chazal are, are understanding Rabbi Akiva's vehement response. Why are you even saying Tem Sukim? Say Naim Sukim. So something seems to bother us here. Namely, what really is bothering Rabbi Akiva? And what are Chazal teaching us about the distinction between Ten and Naim Sukim in the case of Rav Yochanan ben Nuri? So uh, let's turn back to uh, try to understand each one of the opinions. Let's start with Rabbi Yochanan ben Uri's opinion. He believes that what is the essence of Malchiot, Zechronot, Kud'ena, and Shofarot? He says, well, generally we say Hakel HaKadosh. On uh, Rosh Hashanah, we're gonna stay just like Hashem is always sanctified. Hashem isn't just always sanctified. Hashem, especially on Rosh Hashanah, is also HaMelech HaKadosh. That's his status. God is the king, and not just the king, but the sanctified king, because intrinsically, that's God. That's the definition of God. So if we're already going to speak about God as the sanctified king, then why should I blow the shofar? In other words, I don't really have an effect on, on God's sanctification. He's sanctified. I'm going to quote the Pesukim that talk about God be, being sanctified and God being a king. And I'm not going to blow the shofar then because the shofar is really the indication and the expression of Yom Zechron Trua. It's the expression of Kedusha Tayom. It's not expression an expression of God's sanctification or even of God's monarchy. No, no, no. The day is defined by shofar. God isn't defined by shofar. In other words, and malchiot is really about the sanctification of God's name. That's where you should place it. And uh, the shofar sounds are really an expression of the sanctification of the day. Kedusha tayom. Rabbi Akiva clearly disagrees. He says, no, no, no. Why should you say Hamelech HaKadosh? Again, and basically, how can you say that with Malchiot and not blow the shofar? In other words, God is not automatically king, according to Rabbi Akiva. Rather, through what does HaKadosh Baruch Hu become king? Through our coronating Hashem as king. I'm just going to allow that to set in for a moment. According to Rabbi Akiva, you must blow the shofar when uh, you say that God is king because the shofar coronates God as king. The shofar is the expression of God's kingship. It's not just about the day, Kedusha Tayom. The day 
is about malchiot. And therefore, Rabbi Akiva says, you can't juxtapose malchiot to Kedusha Tashem. They're very different. God, sanctification of his name, that's objective. That we don't have an effect on. But the nature of the day, Yom Zichron Trua, this is a day wherein HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that every year, once a year, we have the potential, the opportunity, the wonderful gift of being able to coronate HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to say, Hashem, we really want you as our king again. And we are going to crown you as our king. That's Yom Zichron Trua. The intrinsic nature of the day is a Yom of Malchiot. Malchiot is not simply an expression of God's objective status. In Melech Beliam, God isn't a king, explains Rabbi Akiva, unless we make him our king, unless we accept him as our king, unless we crown God over us. And how do we coronate a king? Through the sounding of a shofar. The shofar sounds are not, as Rabbi Yochanan ben says, just the sanctification of the day. No, the intrinsic nature of the day is Yom Malchut Hashem, as a day of God's kingship. And uh, to a certain degree, to support Rabbi Akiva, whom ultimately we do paskin in accordance to his opinion, we see uh, plenty of psukim that seem to t support this. We look at the psukim that we're going to recite, just get ready, seven times over before blowing the shofar. What do we say in Lamanatech of Avnei Korach Mizmor Tehilim Memzayim? That all the nations are going to blow out to God. God is. He's a melech. Do you ever pay attention to what you say seven times? Allah Elokim Vitrua Hashem Bakol Shofar. God ascends through the blasting of the shofar. When we sound the shofar, what are we literally doing as the Pasuk says? We are elevating Hakarush Baruchu. For all of you who are thinking, Shani, this sounds a little heretical. We have an effect on God, not his sanctity, not his kedusha. We have an effect on God's kingship. And therefore, we can have this effect. HaKadosh Baruch says, come on, Am Yisrael, I'm not your king unless you make me king. Make me king. You have one day a year. That's the nature of this day. This is the beginning of Hashem as king over the entire universe. And he says, Am Yisrael, show the entire universe that I'm king. Crown me as your king. Undergo a coronation ceremony. Trumpet me in as king. Once God is king, then of course, the universe recognizes him as the one who sits on his sanctified kisei. God could literally ascend through our shofar blasts. And just as we find through almost all the coronation ceremonies in Tanakh, we see, uh, for example, by Shlom HaMelech, albeit Adonia, who has the popular support, what ultimately transforms Shlomo to be king. It's not just Natan's approval, David's statement, only when they take him by Yimshachet Shlomo, not even the actual anointment of Shlomo, but rather by Yitzku'u B'Shofar. Only when they blow the Shofar, then by Yamru Kola'am, Yechi HaMelech Shlomo. That's the sound that they're accepting him as king. So now we take a look and we recognize the Psukim that also seem to support the opinion of Rabbi Akiva, because, albeit, the Gemara asks, it says in the Torah by Yikra Parach of Gimel that Rosh Hashanah, or the uh, first of the seventh month, is a Yom Zichron Trua, Shabbaton Zichron Trua. All it says is that we have to blast the, uh, the blast. Wait a second, we know of blasting. We know of Trua. We know it in a Bamidbar Perik Yud that we have Chatzot Srot, we have trumpets. And uh, when do we trumpet the trumpets? Not only upon the assembly and the movement and the encampment of the Machanev Am Yisrael, 
But we also trumpet in times of war, in times of anxiety. And we also trumpet, which would seemingly mean that when uh, we read that in Sefer Vayikra, that it's a Yom Zichron Trua, I would think, so blow the Trua of the Chatzot's throat because it's a day on one half uh, of anxiety, but it's also a day of Simcha. As a matter of fact, it's not just any day of Simcha, but Rosh Hashanah is also a Rosh Chodah. So of course, we should blow from uh, the Chatzot's throat. But the Gemara teaches us, uh, how do we know that we don't blow the true on Rosh Hashanah from the Chatzot's rope, but rather from the Shofar? Tamud Lomar, look at Bayikra Parachafei. There it says, Bavarta Shofar Trua. Okay, we read the Pesukim when we see Bachodesh Hashbi Besor Lachodesh that once every 50 years after seven Shemitah cycles in the 50th year, on Yom HaKippurim, Taviru Shofar, Bechol Artechem, Bekidash Nemet, Shnata Hamishim Shana, Ukratem Dror, Ba'aretz Lachol Yoshveha, Yoval Hitiyah Lachem, Veshavtem Isha Lachuzato, Veish El Mishpachto Tashuvu. Chazal say, wait a second. There, in order to start a Yovel year, you have to blow the shofar. So, great. Why should I learn Rosh Hashanah from this? Because Yovel begins in the seventh month, on the tenth of the seventh month. But, what does this want to tell you? That all the blasts of Trua in the Chodesh Hashvi'i, they should all be from the shofar. And at first glance, this seems a little strange. So just because we blow a shofar for Yovel in the seventh month, once every 50 years, we should blow every year the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. But then again, doesn't it make more sense to blow from the Chatzot's throat? After all, we blow on the Chatzot's throat every Rosh Chodesh. Rosh Hashanah is also a Rosh Chodesh. It makes more sense to blow from the Chatzot's throat. What is the Gemara teaching us by telling us that the shofar is what you should blow on Rosh Hashanah because it's the uh, shofar of the seventh month. The shofar of the seventh month or the trua of a seventh month should remind you of the trua of Yovel because why do we sound the shofar for Yovel? What effect does that shofar have? That shofar blast basically redeems, frees all the slaves and uh, restores the original lands back to the original owners as divvied up by HaKadosh Baruch Hu at the time of Yetziah Mitzrayim. In other words, what is the shofar of Yovel? What is it pronouncing? The control of HaKadosh Baruch Hu of this world. The Malchut of Hashem. More similar to the blast of Yom Semchatchem of Vomo Adechem. Chazal say, no! The uh, shofar yom zichron trua, the trua of Rosh Hashanah is not about simcha. And it's not about anxiety. You know what it's about? It's about malchut Hashem. It's about recognizing that Hashem is our king. And Hashem is the master of slaves. And Hashem is the master of the lands. And Hashem is our master. And Hashem is our king. And therefore, just as you pronounce that, it's true only once every 50 years. Every year you have an opportunity to blow a trua from a shofar, to recognize that Hashem is king. And therefore, Rabbi Akiva is so disappointed with Rabbi Yochanan ben Uri's opinion. How can you speak about HaKadosh Baruch Hu as king without blowing the shofar? That doesn't make any sense. And therefore, we continue, and we have to support Rabbi Yochanan ben Uri a little. So now t we turn to the left side of the room, and we have to uh, show a little support for Rabbi Yochanan ben Uri. What's Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri based on? What does he understand as the nature of Rosh Hashanah? Well, don't worry. He has plenty of Mamare Chazal to base this on as well. For example, a famous Breita, Utkatem Trua. What does that tell us? That there are unique and differentiated sounds of the shofar. Atzkiya b'fneatzma, utrua b'fneatzma. Separate sounds. Hanta omer, atzkiya b'fneatzma, utrua b'fneatzma. Oh, wait, no. El atzkiya utrua achati. Why do you have to learn it as two separate sounds? Maybe they're really one sound. The very fact that it says titku'u and not tariu, maybe they're synonymous. That have omer, no, tkiya b'fneatzma, trua b'fneatzma. That titku'u, velo tariu, blow a tkiya, don't blow a trua. Obviously, they're separate sounds. 
Uminayan ship shuta lefaneha. And how do we know that you should first blow a tkia and then a trua? Because look at the order. Utzkatem trua. Uminayan ship shuta lacharaha. Tamud lomar trua yitkau. Rav Yochanan Benuri is already telling us, I'm sorry, but when I see uh, a brighta such as this, the sounds aren't necessarily about coronating God. If it was about coronating God, it would be enough to blow a tekiah, just one sound like you do for Yobel. There's a tekiah, there's a teruah. No, 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 no. It's uh, part of the nature of the day. Just blast a lot of different sounds. It's not necessarily an expression of malchut Hashem. It definitely doesn't create Hashem as melech, Rabbi Akiva. They're different sounds. Another source for him, source number seven in Mesach Rosh Hashanah, Tanu Rabbanan, Minayin Shomrin Avot. How do we know all the different parts of Shemona Esrei? We uh, take a look. Uh, we know from uh, Avot, Gvurot, Kedusha Hashem, Minayin Shomrin Malchiot Zechornot Shofarot. So here we're finally going to go back to the uh, understanding of the Gemara that everyone knows that we extrapolate Malchiot Zechornot and Shofarot from the Psukim of the Torah. Let's take a look. Rabbi Eliezer says, how do we even know that we're supposed to recite that Hashem is king and that Hashem remembers and blowing the Shofarot of Hashem, ultimately of Geula Dertiv, Shabbaton Zechron Trua Mikra Kodesh. We're going to learn it all, literally, from the five words that the Torah tells us about Rosh Hashanah. Shabbaton, Zichron, Trua, Mikra, Kodesh. Shabbaton, this is Kedusha Tayom. It's like Shabbat, it's Kadosh. Zichron, Ele Zichronot, that's perfect, say Zichronot. Trua, clearly Shofarot. Mikra, Kodesh, so over and over again by all the Moadim we have Mikra Kodesh Yalachem Kom Lachat Avodalo Tasu. A Mikra Kodesh, a proclamation of holiness, uh oh, means that you're not supposed to perform any Malacha. Amrolo Rabbi Akiva. And what's amazing is that this opinion, again, of Rabbi Eliezer, learned it from the different words. Amrolo Rabbi Akiva. Bimthe Malo Namar Shabbaton Shvut. Shabbat Patacha Katuv Tchila. Elat Shabbaton. Rabbi Akiva says that's not how we learn it. Because if you think about it, Rabbi Eliezer's opinion is a perfect support for Rabbi Yochanan Benuri. Why? Take a look at the order. First, Shabbaton. What should you say? Kedusha Tayom. It's a day, again, a special day. Zichron, then say Zichronot, then Shua, then Shofarot. Mikra Kodesh, again, Asiyat Malacha. In other words, Malchio doesn't even appear initially. Rabbi Kiva says, no, 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 that's not how you should learn it. Rather, Shabbaton is Asiyat Malacha. Zichron, Ela Zichronot, Shua, Shofarot. Mikra Kodesh is Kedusha Tayom. It's not the first, it's the last. And minayin sheomrim malchiot. How do we know, according to anyone, that we're supposed to say malchiot? Rebbe, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, learned it from the juxtaposition right before Rosh Hashanah, right before the presentation. We have the end of Shavuos. There it says, Ani Hashem Alokechem, and then we go straight into Uba Chodesh Hashvi'i. So then we have, Ani Hashem Alokechem is malchut. And we're going to see that this is the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva says, what's really the order? The order is first Malchut, Ani Hashem Alokechem. Then you juxtapose that with Shabbaton, Kedusha Tayom. Then go on to Zechronot and Shofarot. Rabbi Yossi bar Rabbi Yehuda says, no, 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 you don't have to say it that way. Rather, when uh, we hear about the Chatzrot Tron, it says, Vayu lachem lizakaron lefnei alokechem, she'en tamud lomar ni Hashem alokechem, ma tamud lomar ni Hashem alokechem, zemana av l'chom makom. And uh, that means that any time, zikron, any time you have, Vayu lachem lizikaron, it should be lefnei alokechem. In other words, the malchiot is really subsidiary to zikronot. This beautifully supports the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan Benuri, that say Malchiot, and then the Kairos Kedusha Tayom, and then you're going to go on to Zechronot, and then to Shofarot. But Rabbi Akiva's uh, halacha is perpetuated by Rebbe, by Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, says, no, 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 Malchiot comes first, and then comes Kedusha Tayom, in which case the Mishnah continues. So where should you put Kedusha Tayom? So uh, Rebbe says, with Malchiot, like Rabbi Akiva, put it with Malchiot. Why? 
mamatzinu b'chol makom b'rvit avkan b'rvit. Because malchiot precedes zechronot and then shofarot. And just as on Shabbos, kedusha tayom mekadeisha hashabbat, the, the Israel, again, there we have it, always the fourth bracha. So uh, Rebbe says, yes, keep it as the fourth bracha. You had Kedusha Tashem. Now uh, we only have three brachot. We have to keep to nine, Kenegeda, the Tvila of Chana. And as such, we're going to make sure that it's the fourth bracha together with Malchio, just like Rabbi Akiva says. The nature of the day, the sanctification of the day is a day of Malchiot. Ah, but then we have a different opinion. Rabbi Shimon Megamliel says, no, say it with Sichronot. Why? Because generally, when it's not just the fourth bracha, it's the fourth out of seven, which means it's the middle bracha. But the middle of nine is not four, but five. Say it as part of zichronot. And here comes uh, a remarkable story. Sure enough, and uh, when uh, Rav Shema Megamliel, as we know, was uh, in Yavne, so on, uh, on Rosh Hashanah, again in Usha, not even in Yavne, Rav Yochanan ben Broka got up, and he performed like Rav Yochanan ben Nuri. What does that mean that he said the brachot like Rav Yochanan ben Nuri? You already know. He said, Malchiot with Kedusha Tashem. And then he said, Kedusha Tayom as the fourth bracha, right? And he wasn't okay with Malchiot. Now, uh, this is interesting. Rabbi Shumun ben Gamliel says to him, Lo no agim kach biavne. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, of course he'd be upset because Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel believes you should say Kedusha Tayom, not as the fourth bracha, but the fifth bracha. So I'd accept Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel to say, uh, I'm sorry, but really you should have said Kedusha Tayom as the fifth bracha. But instead he says, what did you do wrong? Again, he says, again, you did something wrong. The next day, again, Yarad Rabbi Hanina ben Osho Rabbi Yossi Haglili Vasak Rabbi Akiva. So we already know what's Rabbi Akiva. Say Kedusha ha Hashem, and then Malchiot with Kedusha Tayom, also as the fourth bracha, but blow the shofar. Amar Rabbi Shomu Megamliel, kacha, you know again biavne. In other words, even though Rabbi Shomu Megamliel maintains that Kedusha Tayom should be the fifth bracha, what does he believe is really the proper practice? I don't care so much about Kedusha Tayom. What do I care more about? The nature of the day of Malchiot, of saying Malchiot with Tekiat Shofar. And uh, with this, we're going to see the last part of the shiur, which is how the Gemara explains it. Instead of the Gemara saying that Rabbi Akiva is really upset, how can you say malchiot without blowing the shofar? He doesn't really mean that because he knows that even Rabbi Yochanan ben Uri believes that you have to say malchiot. And Hashem lokechem every time there's zechronot, you have to also mention malchiot. Rather, he's upset about the number of psukim. Really? What is the essence of the number of psukim? The Mishnah tells us that you need ten psukim for malchiot, zechronot, shofarot. But Rav Yochanan ben Nuri says, Amar im amar shlosha, shlosha mikulan yatsa. Rav Yochanan ben Nuri says, but really, if you say three, then three of each, then it's okay. So then uh, the Gemara says, wait, we're a little confused. What does he mean, three of each? Does he mean... One of Malchiot, one of Zechronot, one of Shofarot. In other words, instead of ten psukim, it's enough to say <coughs> the David, three psukim. Or does he mean three, three, three? Three from the Torah, meaning instead of saying, uh, we usually say for each one, uh, three from the Torah, three from Nevi'im, three from Ketuvim, and then one more from the Torah. So is he saying, saying one from the Torah, one from Nevi'im, one from Ketuvim? Or does he mean, say, three, instead of adding the extra one from the Torah? What's the nafkamina? Instead of saying ten, either say three, or instead of saying ten, say nine. Beautiful. That really is a difference of, of six. So uh, the Gemara concludes and says, if you turn now to page five, that means we're almost there, that it must mean uh, that uh, because, uh, again, uh, we see uh, that even Rav Yochanan ben Nuri says the very end, Tashma de Tanya, we have another writer that says, Impochatim miyasara machiot, miyasara zechrono, miyasara shofarot, ima mar sheva mikulan. If you said at least seven, can I get the seven rikiot, then that's okay. Which means, would Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri say you can go down to three? No, you need minimally seven. Which means that Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri believes, what can you say? Not three, but nine. 
Excellent. So Rav Yochanan ben Nuri believes nine. So it must be that Rabbi Akiva is saying, Rav Yochanan ben Nuri, if you're not going to uh, say Malchiot at the right place, you're not going to blow the shofar with Malchiot, then you may as well say nine. That's how the Gemara understood it. Well, why? Let Rav Yochanan ben Nuri have his tenth pasuk. Why take away the last pasuk? So uh, Rav Salvechik explains that what's bothering Rabbi Akiva is the following. is the placement Rav Soloveitchik explains that if you look at the three, the Tempsukim that we say from Malchiot, Tzachronot, and Shofarot, they follow a pattern. The first three that we say from the Torah, first we give a general introduction, then we have all the Psukim that basically serve, uh, again, more or less as uh, a Bakasha to Hashem, or sorry, then we have uh, a basic, uh, again, Pasuk that explains it, then we have the tenth Pasuk from the Torah, that's a Bakasha. In other words, he says, we always begin, uh, as uh, Rav uh, Salvechik explains, we begin with uh, some general introduction uh, of uh, Hodaya. Then we have uh, En Shebach. And then we end with a Bakasha. He says, what's bothering uh, Rabbi Akiva? Rabbi Akiva says, I'm sorry, but the last Pasuk, again, is always a Bakasha. How can you say the last Pasuk a Bakasha with Malchiot if you're putting Malchiot in which section? In the Shevach section. You can't put Bakasha in the, sev- in the Shevach section. You have to leave Bakasha in the middle section. So don't say the Bakasha Bracha. However, that seems to be something that Rabbi Akiva would not be so adamant about. And for years it bothered me, why is Rabbi Akiva? Rabbi Akiva, who loves everyone. Rabbi Akiva, who generally, again, is a very calm personality, Rabbi Akiva, who true before his ballet tshuva stages, uh, spoke uh, very emphatically again about Chachamim. Why now would he speak against Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri and say, Im Kain, and why would you even say, not just Lama Tokea, why would, why uh, even blow the shofar? The Gemara says, why say Temsukim? You should only say nine. And the answer is in the 10th Pasuk of Malchiot. Anyone remember? We say three Pesukim from the Torah, then three from Tehillim, and three from Nevi'im, and a 10th Pasuk from the Torah. Let's see if everyone's been doing their Chazara, even the people who just came in. What's the 10th Pasuk of Malchiot from the Torah? Shema Yisrael. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Rabbi Akiva turns to Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri and he says, if you're not going to blow the shofar when you say Malchiot, you're going to include it as part of Kedusha Tashem, as something that's objective that we don't have an effect on, then why say the 10th Pasuk? Why say the Pasuk of Kabbalat O Machut Shamayim? Why say that we have the power to be Mamlech HaKadosh Baruch Hu if you're not going to be Mamlech HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Why say that Pasuk? And why is it that Rabbi Akiva, and I can't help, like Rabbi Akiva, to raise one's voice here? Why would it bother Rabbi Akiva that someone would say that Hashem is Melech without being Mamlech HaKadosh Baruch without being Mekabal O'Machut Shamayim, without saying Shema Yisrael Hashem Okinu Hashem Achad, because Rabbi Akiva lived and died with Shema Yisrael. Because he lived and died with this mantra of Kabbalah I'm sorry, Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, but I can't contain my frustration. Hashem gives us one day a year to have an opportunity to actively create him as our king, to show him how committed we are, to scream out as a bakasha while we simultaneously blow the shofar and crown HaKadosh Baruch Hu with Shema Yisrael HaShem Lekinu HaShem Achad. For Rabbi Akiva, as we know, it was always Man Kriyat Shema. He's not afraid of the Roman authorities. He's afraid of living without Torah like the fish out of water. For him, it's always Zman Kriyat Shema. It's Rabbi Akiva who, as we know, teaches V'avtat HaShem Alokecha B'chol Abavcha V'chol Nafshacha Afilo Notel Et Nishmatcha that we're so committed to God that we're even willing to give up our lives. We pass in like Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, who as we know, when Moshe Rabbeinu visits his base Medrash, 
teaches a davar echad. And what is that? Enigmatic davar echad? It's the words of Shema Yisrael Hashem Okin Hashem Echad. He teaches the Torah of Moshe Misinai, what it means to be committed to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even to be willing to give up our lives for Hashem. And Rabbi Akiva's favorite yantif, I'm sure, is Rosh Hashanah. It's a day that Hashem says once a year you have the power to crown HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to show that we create Hashem as our king. But this year, more than any other year, we're going to scream it and we're going to shout it. And we understand why we paskin, like Rabbi Akiva. Because this year, we're going to turn to Hashem and say, Hashem, the entire year we've been giving up uh, our sons and our daughters. We've been sacrificing so many lives. Rabbi Atkan, yes, afilu no telet nafshacha. We can yell out with full conviction, Shema Yisrael Hashem Okino Hashem Achad. This year, it's not just the stories of Roe Klein, it's the stories of every single chayal dancing before they go to Aza, screaming before they go to attack Nasrallah in Lebanon. Hashem, we're willing to give up our lives for you, for Torah. Hashem, every hour for us, every moment is a shat kriyachma. And once a year, we get to turn to you and we say, Hashem, it's this Kabbalat al Shamayim that creates you as king. It's this Kabbalat al Shamayim, it's this 10th Pasuk through which you become our king. We have shown you hundreds of times this year, Hashem, that you are our king. And this year, Rabbi Akiva is telling us, scream out even before we get to Yom Kippur, to scream out more than ever, Hashem, this is Kedushat Hayom. This is the intrinsic nature of Rosh Hashanah, the opportunity for each and every one of us to relate to that Mesirut Nefesh, to feel that sense of commitment to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to be able to crown HaKadosh Baruch Hu as our king. And with that, to dive in with the shofar blast, to kab shofar gadol l'chirutinu, may we all bez Hashem bizochem.